Okay, I have uh, sound here and we are recording. And as I had promised you in the email and in the announcements that I made to uh, get us started, uh, I, we're, we're not going to have class session on Monday. So I'm providing you a screencast in advance of what would be basically our first class, uh, third uh, class session. And I want to just take time for a moment to make sure that, that everybody understands. Uh, and I'll go over here to the announcements. Mondays are, the, are, are days that we have a ground-based class. In other words, I'm there at Shawnee. Uh, we have class. And so this Monday is not typical. And also next Monday will not be typical because that's going to be Labor Day. But our, as, as we move past some of the scheduling stuff, on my doctor's appointments and then the holiday next Monday, um, we're, we're gonna be in a situation where Monday will be a ground-based day. And I want you to attend uh, the class uh, over at Bailey Business Lab. Now, if you can't attend physically, and, but you're somewhere you have access and you can, and you can attend virtually by beaming in on the, to the screencast, that I want you to do. If you can't do either, you're traveling or whatever, then I expect you sometime during the week to see the screencast uh, and, and, and to review it. And I, then I count that as attendance. Now, on Wednesday, our Wednesdays are virtual, okay? So I'll be doing a live screencast from my office over here in Oklahoma City, all right? And then I will expect you to attend by uh, using a device, whatever. And for some of you, it can be as simple as you use the computers over in Business Bailey Business Center, okay? And then you log in using your phone so you can use, so you can hear the audio. Because I know that the, so those computers in Bailey have, have some problems, or if you have, your own computer, you can just simply join us uh, and join me. So they're both class sessions, and my expectation is that you'll be in class if you can't, and you're gone, then my expectation is, is that, be, be, that, that sometime that week, I see that you have, I see that you've logged in and you've looked at the class session. So Mondays are ground-based days, Wednesdays are virtual days, and then Friday is a virtual lab day, and that's where I give you time to, to work on exams, try to complete them, uh, to, to finish up working on uh, your uh, work, that, on work that's due. I want to take today uh, and, 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 and to go over, I, I'd, I'd ask you on, I had asked you to kind of familiarize yourself with, with Canvas, if you've used it before, go back and refresh your memory and so forth. And so I just want to talk some about the course and, uh, and, and get us rolling along. And again, uh, you'll see here from the announcements that we've got the, uh, the I've got the invitation, for example, to the uh, screencast that I'm going to do on Virtual Wednesday in here. Okay. And I also had the schedule for week zero and week one and some and visited with you about the hybrid format. Now I said this yesterday to the two classes uh, that I had uh, and, and it's this. Uh, my classes are deceptively easy. Here I lay out everything you need to, to do, everything you need to know. The exams are open book, open note. I handle things like this screencast, usually we'll do a case. I handle them as a workshop, and if you just simply follow the case and then turn it in, you get the credit. Now these cases are things that are important for you to know and to watch and pay attention because you'll see, you'll be using similar skills, okay, as we, uh, when you hit the exams. My exams to my the, and and certainly the final and and the projects that are that are attached to the course. So 
I give, I put, I put the, I, I, cha I challenge you to be self starters. I challenge you to be able to manage and monitor your time. And so you'll learn a lot about yourself. And that's part of the thing that we say that we do here at OBU is we work in transforming your life. Well, part of it is managing this course. And all I can tell you is that when you go to work, it's likely at some point in your career that you'll have a boss who is remote from you or you're remote from them. You're going to have clients. You may be put on a work team if you go to work for, for a company uh, or maybe a project team that will have people in several different time zones. So working in, in a virtual environment is important. And working without me being over your shoulder okay is an important thing and so i would i would encourage you to say okay how can i make how do i make sure and, and this might even be building your own schedule how do i make sure that i don't get off track okay i now again my policy if you've taken class with me and particularly in the hybrid format is this if it's late the first time, it's half credit. From then on, it's zero. And I don't accept any late work in week 10. I, so many times I have students tell me, well, I will tell me, treat me like I'm an adult. I am, okay? Uh, try not filing your income taxes sometime and find out what happens. Um, uh, let, your, let your driver's license expire and get in a wreck and see what happens. Be late with your payments and see what happens. So I'm treating you like an adult, okay? The other is this, if I give you a, an assignment or a whole series of assignments and say, here it is, then it's up to you to do that. And if, you're, and if you don't possess the capacity to be a self-starter and, and, to, and to manage your time, then an important part of what we do with you here is has not taken, it's not worked. The whole world belongs to the people who do their homework and the world belongs to the people who show up, okay? And so I can tell you that if you believe that you've had a habit of turning in work late, that you'll be able to just go out at work and you'll just flip the switch and you'll be fine. I'm sorry. You, you will have created a habit that will be hard for you to break. So in that sense, this course is a real challenging course. In addition, um, we're going to see in this course how we can use the, the problem solving method or what we call the scientific method or the use of models to, uh, to, to work through very complex business problems. And we're going to learn how to use some software uh, that helps us take those problems and, and, and boil them down to their essence. And we're gonna see that the, that the techniques we'll use in management science, we can apply to all, almost every type of business situation. And that's, and that's very, very important for you to, to, to know. Think of it, for example, all of the work that has to go into a, a, an iPhone and just getting it built. And then that iPhone has to be shipped to the United States. And then it has to be distributed all over the United States in the various ways that Apple retails its phones and the phone companies that retail the phones. That doesn't happen by accident. Global trade is a miracle. It's a gift from the good Lord. Be and, and most people don't realize this, but 90% of the goods that are produced in the world are shipped by water. And then it becomes a combination of rail and, and, and delivery uh, uh, by semi-trailer trucks. And so we have to have ways to manage this massive transportation network. It's the same with airlines. And we're gonna see all kinds of ways that we can, we can use these techniques in management science. One of the great job areas for jobs that are open is in the field of logistics. Why? It's pretty simple. If 
your if you can't get your if you can't get the goods you've sold to your customer, your cart is empty. Think about what Amazon has to do to get goods to you. Think about all the work that has to go into, uh, let's say, a, a franchise, Sonic, all of the all of the, all of the work that has to go through to get food to them on time. So when people order food, it's there. And so we're going to see a lot of those techniques and, and the use of optimization. And we're going to also see that underneath those techniques are typically some type of principle out of mathematics or out of science. Well, just to, to refresh your memories, you get over here in the announcements section, you'll see those. Okay, and as I promised, I'm doing a pre-recording. This will this is a pre-recording for Monday the 27th. Now, let's go back through the rest of, of Canvas and just, just a quick overview here of the assignments. It'll list all of those, okay? And I have the dates that we're going, you know, you're gonna be working with. And we have a, 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 a case that's gonna be due on the 31st, and that's Nolan Plastics. And we'll talk about that. And then we have, uh, the files, this is where you'll find almost every single thing you need uh, in terms of, of, of instructions, materials, the syllabus, the files that we need to work with uh, for um, as we do the cases. All right. Now, we should, we, we, we had some issues in the lab at OBU this week, and they, sh and I was over there. Friday morning, uh, as they were, as as the folks from IT were working in there to get it fixed up, so you can get to, uh, you can get into the, get into um, uh, the VMware, and and we'll go through that when you're in the lab. Uh, well, I'm over there. Uh, well, you'll need to go to the lab, and we'll talk about that. But the the VMware uh, isn't is there and well, let me briefly stop and say this okay when you go in there's are instructions for how you log into the computer in the lab at Bailey all right now there's you'll see it it's a little green icon up in the top left of the of the screen and it you'll it'll say VMware and you click on it and you go through the steps and that it lets you get to access its Excel etc if you already have Excel on your machine, uh, that's good. If you have a computer, that'll be, that'll be a good situation for you. So here are the files, all right? There's a section called the syllabus. And again, this walks you through uh, when things are due. Okay. Okay. And You can see that we've got the things that are due the August the August the twenty first, August the thirty first, and I may have to do a little bit of work in here. I'm seeing a block of assignments. These may be some things that I've that are just left over. Anyway, now let's come over here and we'll come into an important part known as the modules. All right, and this is the getting started. This has the course resources, the syllabus. Now, some of these you may you may not see because I've got them. There are some items higher. You, if you may see them because you're looking at my screen, you won't. But they're not going to be on yours because they're stuff I've I've I have blocked out because we're not using them. Here's a link uh, to the textbooks. And I want to talk about that real quickly about the textbooks that we are, we're going to be using. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to find the syllabus. Now, if I can't find, I can, I can search for the syllabus in a couple of ways. I can do control F. Okay. And we'll go here. 
is a syllabus attachment. So the syllabus is, we're going to have to go in here into the, um, into the files section. I will put in the syllabus. And here it is. Uh, there's the syllabus, the syllabus attachment. So I've chosen to call it something else here. So we'll flip down here and take a look. And I'm going to have to get some more uniformity in my name, names for these. Um, here it is, MG3603 Fall. That's the syllabus. So let me open that up. Yeah, there it is. So now, um, note that Wednesdays and Fridays are virtual. We don't physically meet. And we've talked some about how we do. Uh, typically what I do on Monday is I'll cover a case, a, a workshop. And, uh, and, then, and then the same thing on Wednesday. And uh, those will be things that will be usually, and usually everything is due on Friday. Now, uh, here's the grading. You've got uh, homework and class workshops. There's the, and there are um, there are 14 points apiece. You've got exams from the Anderson text. You're going to have a self-developed quiz from the Anderson text, and then you're going to have an opportunity through uh, Teradata University to use SAP Business One, SAS Visual Analytics. And there are two parts to those instructions. Then the final exam, part A, is where you'll get to use some of these skills that we've, that we've done in the workshops. And uh, then final B will be a, a self-developed quiz from the Foreman te text, and that's the Data Smart text. Now, the, the three textbooks, the, the textbooks that are here, uh, are these the introduction to management science and that's the big textbook okay and then the second one is data is the data smart text so I'm going to go over here and uh, let me do this move this around here and so I can get to and open up a new tab Go over here to Vital Source. And I'll move you guys out of the way. And then I'll go to my bookshelf. It may make me uh, log in the other going to. See it wave at us? Yeah, that's what I even asked. Say, hey, bro, what's happening? Oh, I go through that. I've been having some issues with this this thing, and of course, uh, here there are the cars. Oh, okay. There are not no cars left.
All right, I'm just going to get out of this for just a second. I've been having these issues with these with this all the time. Let me go back here for a moment. And all right. I'm going to sign in. Okay, there. All right. You're giving me some trouble. Now, I'm going to go to my bookshelf, and we'll look at the big, at the textbooks for the, for the course. Uh, here's the first one. This is the Introduction to Management, to Management Science. And I go up here to the table of contents. In fact, I go to the, the uh, home page on it. Oops. Wrong place. And I'll go back here for just a minute. And I'm going to pull that. Um, want to take a look at this. And here's the table of contents. And this is the uh, 14th edition, and this is the new edition that we'll be using here. I'll make sure that I've uh, got that. I'll go to my bookshelf here, and we'll be able to see it. And there's the 13th edition. Here uh, is the 14th edition, which is what we're going to be using. I'm going to go back here for just a minute, and I'm still kind of squaring around, but I, it, now, this textbook, and, and they're going to walk us through, this will be the, the main text for the course, and then the course, the Data Smart textbook, I'll show you that one as well. Here it is. So there are two textbooks that we're going to be using, and for example, uh, our first case is going to be um, the, uh, the case involving, um, is going to be the case that we use from the, uh, the management science text, edition 14, all right? And so I'm going to do a search here quite real quick and put Nolan Plastics. And they should be in here. I'll do this search. Hmm. Well, let's just go through here and we'll go to the table of contents. And we'll roll down. This is chapter one, of course, and, we're, we're, and I'm going to have you um, work on a case called Nolan Plastics, and that's going to be the first case that we'll be working with. Okay. And I'm going to find it here in just a second. I'll go back over here for the assignments. All right. And I have the files here for you. Let me go back over here to the modules for a moment. And let's see here, module one. And what I'd ask you to do also is to take some time 
and uh, and 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 work with. Just take a look at, at Easy Excel Solver and Excelver. Uh, those these are some resources on some components of Excel that we're going to be using. And I ask you to, to upload Nolan Plastics, okay? And here's the Nolan Plastics key. And and Nolan, no wonder. Uh, and here's here's the file. And what I'll have you do is download uh, download this to your desktop, okay? And then we'll go over the case, and then you'll upload it. So I apologize. It's Nolan, N O W L I. No wonder I couldn't find it. And the these are links to uh, um, resources out there that will tell you uh, about. Excel Solver, how it works. This is a website that gives you everything you need to know because we're going to be using the solver a lot and how we use it, these different types of, of uh, choices in the way that we do the modeling using a solver. And then here's Nolan Plastic, so we'll talk about that. Okay, and that'll be due at, 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 on Friday, and here's the key. And then we have two quizzes out of the exam, Anderson text that are due on the 31st, okay? And so I, would, I, would, I want you, in preparation for this, to take a look at these websites, at these resources. And I don't want to spend some time, too much time with, with null and plastics because we're going to have some other uh, work that we'll, we'll do and see there on Monday the 3rd, there's no class, it's Labor Day. So on that Wednesday, we're going to cover Nolan, and then we'll look at Par Inc. And Nolan's going to be over in pages 14 through 16. So I'll go back over here and uh, put in the right, spell it right, and hopefully I'll get it. And uh, go back over here to... Page 14, and we'll go to page, and here we're going to be working with a problem dealing with volume and revenue. All right, and I have an example there for you. Nolan Plastics. And navigating, it just kind of takes you some time to get used to it. And then we'll see some of the different management science techniques. Okay? So they're using a case here uh, in which they're doing profit and volume and doing break-even analysis. And I want to go back over for just a minute, back over here into the modules. And The um, and I'll put the hang on for a minute. I want to see if I put this into the uh, into the syllabus. Let's look here for just a minute. Friday, Nolan Plastics. Okay, yeah, I I have the the uh, I have the file over here in the in the files area of the raw data, and you should be able to find Nolan. And I want you, and I have the the Nolan the Nolan key, and. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make that visible, okay? And I'm going to publish it, and they'll update it, okay? And so I have the Nolan, so you'll want to find the Nolan key. Now, I'm going to open that up, and let's take a few minutes and talk about it. And... In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download it. 
Okay. And I'm going to uh, show it my folder. And then I'm going to put it out here on my desktop. Okay. And I'm going to open it up. And Nolan is a classic uh, case where we're going to be using um, we're going to be using the um, variable cost and total revenue model. Okay. And now the background material for that, and I'm going to diminish this for just a second. And we'll go back up here. And we'll look at the text for just a second. And this is this quantitative analysis, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but these are models of cost, revenue, and profit, okay? And this is, we're gonna be doing break even out analysis. Now they have a file in here and somebody called Viper, whoever that is. That, and it's, it's really, it's just the same data, just a different name of a company. Okay, well, no, they have, they, they have my, my, no and plastics in here for sure. The search function on this just must be funky sometimes. Um, here they are. And, the, and Nolan, and as I'd said, it's over on page 14. So I should have just trusted I'd already done this. But they give it, we, use, we use the cost and volume model, break even, okay? Now, I'm gonna diminish this and go back down. And, we're, and in this case, we're gonna use the goal seek to find the best cost to, to use the uh, break-even analysis. Now, first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on data. Okay. And then I'm going to, I click on the data and then I'm going to come over here across the, the, across the ribbon and I'm going to look for the what if analysis. All right. And I'm going to click what if and in this case, I'm going to look for the goal C. All right. Now, here's goal C is the first of the three tools that we use in the what if analysis. And the whole reason that we use the solver tool, uh, the scenario manager, and the goal C is very simple. These are ways for us to say, okay, what do things or conditions look like? If certain things change or if we change certain variables what do they look like alrighty now the first thing and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna click OK and and just cancel this off for a minute now we're gonna use goal seek and let's look at we see three things here all right we have the profit goal we have a break-even goal and we have a break-even fixed cost. So let's start with the profit goal. And we want to use a goal seek to obtain a selling price per unit. Okay, because remember uh, the, the, the break-even, okay? And you remember those equations in the book talks about those. The text walks us through that, the break-even analysis. So we're gonna use the goal seek to obtain a selling price per unit necessary to achieve a profit of $5,000. Now. I give you the tell you that the result is 12, and you can see that right here. But let's walk through this. Here's the fixed cost. Here are the variable cost per unit. Here's the selling price per unit. And then here's the model. Here's the production volume. Okay. And here's the total cost. And the total cost is pretty simple. It's the uh, fixed cost plus the variable cost per unit times the production volume per unit. And that gives us the total cost. And then here's total revenue. And that's pretty simple. 
it's going to be the selling price per unit times the volume. And then the total profit obviously is going to be the total revenue minus the total cost. Now we say, all right, I want to, uh, I want to make a profit of $5,000. Okay. How much do I need to sell each unit? What should, my, what should be my selling price per unit if I want to achieve the, 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 uh, a, a, pro, a total profit of $5,000 and I need to keep fixed costs at $3,000 and I need to keep variable costs at $2. This is a process we call optimization. And the break-even analysis is, is just one of those ways that we do that. Uh, and if you remember, if you took a, a B, BISS 1123 with me, we did a break-even analysis where we looked at a company uh, that I think the, I, they sold some type of food product. I don't remember right off the hand, but we, we, we charted the data for break-even, and then you could see the profit, the area of profit, the area of loss. So we're going to... We're going to click on one analysis here and we're going to go to goal C and we're going to set the cell uh, down here and we want to know our, our set the cell. Okay. To, and that'll be B, B 18 and we're going to set it to a value and that's going to be 5,000 by changing a cell and the cell that we're going to change, okay, is the selling price. And we're gonna click okay, and it'll do its magic, and it found the answer for us. So goal seek lets me say, lets me work with one variable, okay? And the textbook chapter pages 14 through 17 in chapter one cover this case, show you the, the talk about break-even analysis, uh, and, the, and, the, and the break-even equation. So we've seen a profit go, but let's say that I just simply have a, a goal that deals, deals with break-even uh, the fixed cost, or, and we're gonna start first, we're, and we're, we're gonna go to volume. Okay, now, we wanna obtain the break-even volume. How much of this stuff do I need to produce? If I have a fixed cost of 3,000 bucks, I have a variable cost of $2,000, and I have a selling price per unit of $5. Now let's look at these for just a minute. It's pretty simple. My total cost is gonna be what? The, the uh, variable cost per unit times a a ver ver the fixed cost, excuse me, that's in B3, plus two times B12. And that two is the uh, variable cost per unit, and then it and and then uh, B twelve is going to be the production volume, and that gives us our total cost. And then we have total revenue, and then we have a zero loss. In other words, we're at break even. So again, we're going to use the the uh, the goal seat. Okay, and I'm going to set the and, and and I want to obtain the break-even volume. So this time I'm going to set the production volume, and that's B12. Okay, and uh, and we we want the the um, break-even volume to be a thousand. And we're gonna change the selling price per unit. And that will be here. So let's stop for a moment and say, my goal is to set, that's the set cell, that's my goal. And so it says, okay, tell me which, what, what, what cell? And in, in this case, it's B12, it's production volume. My goal, is for a thousand units, and I and I said, okay, I need to know how much to sell it by. All right, 
So we're going to click OK. And this And we want to use the selling price per unit. We're going to set the cell to a thousand by changing the cell at B7. And it's giving me this funky little thing. Let me see for a minute what I've got here. Oh, okay. Well, the problem I'm running into is, is that I don't have a formula here. I have one here, I have one here. So I need a production volume. So in this case, I could sit here and literally play with this. Uh, well, look, I know that these have to, be, if I wanna have just break even, I know these have to be equal and so I, and so I just need to do work with the production volume, but um, and and to get that, so in that case with this model, it's simple. I could say, okay, what if I make uh, I, I want to break it? I make a thousand of them. Now, what we could do is this: is we could look at well, we've looked at the selling price per unit to get a profit goal. But this, again, you can see, we just use this equation. And because we don't have a formula in there, okay, and we have the total cost. So this one was a little bit less cooperative because we didn't have a, um, we didn't have a, a uh, we didn't have a, a variable in there. But I can, I, I can, I don't hate, I don't have to use the goal analysis in this, I can say, okay, what does it look like if the production volume is 500 units? And I'm losing money, all right? What does it look like if the production volume is 4,000 units? Well, I've got a total, I've got a profit, but, uh, but I'm not gonna sell that much, or I'm, pardon me, I'm not gonna make that much. But I think uh, I'm, I, what's reasonable, what I can handle in my shop is a thousand units. And so there I am. Now we're going to look at break even fixed cost. Okay. And this will be another one where we'll encounter a little bit of this issue. All right. And so we're going to look at the what if analysis and that doesn't have a formula in it either. So we may run into the same issue. So I'm going to set cell B3, okay, uh, and the, the, we're going to use the to obtain the fixed cost necessary, to, and we're going to uh, to achieve break even. So we know what fixed cost, okay, and so uh, to achieve break even. So I'm going to set the cell, okay. to zero because we want to break even by changing this cell up here. And we found a solution. So we achieved the break even. Now let me do the goal, the what if analysis again. We're going to do goal seek. Now we want to use the goal seek to obtain a fixed cost necessary to achieve break even. Now we're, we're note that we're selling 800 units at $12 uh, selling price per unit. So let's walk through this for a moment. Our production volume, um, we want to know, uh, we know that the production volume is going to be 800. That's a given. We know the selling price per unit is 12 bucks. We know the variable cost per unit is $2. So, Knowing this, the to total cost is simple, okay? And I'll cancel that off for a minute. The total cost is simple. It's basically um, the, uh, the, the, the total cost minus the total revenue, okay? 
pardon me, the total clock, I'm sorry. It's late at night on Friday, I'm tired, and I'm probably not doing the best, but I want to get this behind me so I could get it posted for you. Uh, it's B3 plus two times B12. B3 is the fixed cost, and so we know the total cost is gonna be $9,600, because we know that the total revenue is $9,600 and to get break even. But we can use the goal seek here to do that. So we're gonna set the sell, the 18, and we're gonna put it at zero, and we're gonna change the sell, the fixed costs, And there we go. So this file now, uh, I'll close it here for a moment. The Nolan key, and I, notice I downloaded it to my desktop, and then what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm going to wanna upload it, okay? And I'm going to go back over to the files. I'll close this off. And then I'm going to take the Nolan key and I'm going to go back over here and where it says in the modules, upload, uh, upload uh, uh, Nolan here, Nolan Plastics upload here, you'll want to upload it. So I have the key there for you. And so we've seen how we've used uh, we've used goal seek to work with the very simple uh, the very simple concept as far as the break even analysis. Now, uh, I want to get this down here for a minute and move it away. But it kind of is a crowded screen here, and it can be a little bit difficult. These models of of cost, and profit, and revenue. You can see that we walk through those. And the break even point. And there they begin the discussion of Nolan Plastics and they end it. Here are some of the different management science techniques. Now, I'm gonna go back over here to the introduction in chapter one and take some time to talk about management science. Most of the techniques, all right, uh, that we've learned in, in, in management science really came from the Second World War when people had an area called operations research and they had to figure out how, how many planes are we gonna need? How many bombs do we produce? How do we get stuff shipped from the United States to, uh, to Europe? Etc. And so a lot of these 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 techniques came into being. Now here are the different here are the tip here are the five steps that we go through in the decision making process. We define the problem. Okay. We identify some alternatives. We determine the criteria. We evaluate the alternatives, and then we cre create, and then we choose an alternative. And this works from the idea that decision-making is not black or white. Decision-making is choosing between a, 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 an outcome that could be really, really bad versus an outcome that could be really good. So it's not just a simple black and white exercise. It's not discrete or, or, or um, it, it's, it's not discrete, it's, it's continuous. Okay, so here and here they gave us, here they show you an example, and you want to take a look at the book where they talk about uh, a job decision, and this person is, is going to use a technique to decide based on these different alternative locations where they could take a job, and based on these variables that are important to them, the job that they will want to choose, and they're going to go through a rating process. And this is a nice schematic that shows you and, it, and this is important for you to understand. There's a, and I want to take you back to this for just a minute. There's a difference between 
decision making, okay, and problem solving. When we make a decision, we choose an alternative. That's different than problem solving because problem solving becomes an effort of implementing that alternative and seeing if we get the performance that we thought that we'd get. Okay? And they walk us through here in figure uh, 1.2, uh, the classification of the decision-making process, and they show us structuring the problem, understanding the problem, and then analyzing it. And this is an algorithm that we follow. And you can see it, this is important for you to understand that, that. now over, over time, now when organizations have big problems to solve, they will typically go through this exercise kind of intuitively. And so over time, you'll get used to this process where we define a problem, we identify it, we determine what are the key criteria, the key things that we've got to deal with. And then we can do some qualitative analysis or quantitative analysis, and then we summarize, and then we make the decision. This is often a far more circular or fluid process than depicted here. But if you do, if you, if, if a firm or an individual does good decision making, they'll follow this process. Some people, like a Bill Gates, Stephen Jobs, <laughs> are not human beings because they just do this uh, naturally. You and I have to learn it. So here we see some information about quantitative analysis. And here's a very, very important part of what we call model development. Many times students will ask us, will ask me, why do you have so many of these BISS courses? You, I have, you have BISS 1103, you have BISS 3503 and, and 4403 and 1123. What's the point? Here's what those courses are about. They're about showing you models that are embedded in the technology that companies use. A spreadsheet is a model. It's a tool, just like a database is a tool and they both are designed to do certain things and they both and, and they both have a particular function and you as a decision maker have to understand that and know when I use one and when I want to use another and how they support each other in information systems information technology information systems are not about hardware, they're not about software, they're about people making decisions, taking data and turning it into information. And information is data that I can use for decision making. Now along the way, we expose you to the two most iconic, as your textbook mentions here, models that are, that are out there. One is, is Microsoft Excel and the other is Microsoft Access. If you understand them, how they work, how they're put together, you can work on any application that's out there. And can I predict if you'll go to work and you'll use Excel versus maybe some other spreadsheet product? I, I can't predict that. But I can tell you this, no matter what spreadsheet top product you use, you'll have seen Excel and you understand how it works. The same thing with the database. You may work with Oracle, you may work with the SAS Visual Analytics, you may work with SAP, you may work with Crystal Reports, but when you take that data administration course, you under, understand how a database looks like and we really talk about it from the perspective of the end user, as well as the database administrator of creating this thing called a data warehouse that lets you harvest information from it 
that you can use to make a decision. Okay, and so we see model development, all right? And we have some things called analog models. They have some physical appearance. And then we have mathematical models. So that are, those are the most powerful because with mathematical models, we can simulate different conditions, okay? And we're gonna be doing some of that. This is a very, very important part of the chapter. And then we start to talk about the constraints and the objective function. Here is a mathematical model. We wanna maximize something subject to the following constraints. P equals 10X, that's the objective function, i.e. the answer. And then we have some constraints. We have 5X of something and they have to be less than or equal to 40. And then X has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we have these constraints. So it recognizes that we have goals but we operate under constraints. Now here's another model, and this one is, and I, it is, is more, of a, more of a schematic, and it shows you the process of transforming model inputs into outputs. Notice that we have what we call uncontrollable inputs. These are stuff out of the environment. Facebook's rolling along, they're making billions of dollars. Pe people complain about it, but on the whole, everybody's happy about it. And then suddenly a thing called Russian hacking occurs. And suddenly Facebook is everybody's, is on everybody's list to sell. Suddenly Mark Zuckerberg goes from hero to schmuck because the Russian government and through its operatives decided to use cyber warfare against the United States. They're still doing it, okay? And we, when we know, we keep getting reports every day that they've even sniffed around our power plants, our electrical systems, okay? Now, because the Russians live in a closed society, practically, because Putin is basically a dictator, the Russian people have no idea what we may be getting ready to do then. And trust me, if we can, if we can uh, mess with the centrifuges in an atomic plant in Iran, we can definitely do some serious harm. The problem that we have right now is someone has not, that we know of has not sat down with, with Mr. Putin and said to him, if you mess with our power plants, uh, we're not gonna have to use any nuclear weapons, but we will shut everything down. And he's reluctant probably to do too much because he knows this. If he puts, for example, he, enter, he, he goes into, the, into, the, into our uh, financial system grid and messes with us, all we've got to do is turn off the tap. These things called sanctions, where countries won't do business with them, hurts him. And so he's getting squeezed, and he wants to find a way to put somebody or peoples in place that won't squeeze him so hard. Okay, so Facebook's caught up in all the middle of this. So is Twitter, all right? Uh, and, and so suddenly social media, which, which everybody loved, Twitter was wonderful, but yeah, suddenly we have all these hate tweets, all these, we have these uncontrollable factors that impact. And then we have controllable inputs. We can make some decisions. We, we have some control over some variables. And then we build our mathematical model and then we have the output, but notice it says projected results. And again, decision-making is not a process of black and white, yes or no. It's, it's, it's not that at all. It's looking at ranges of, alter, of alternatives and saying, here's what might happen really, really good or really, really bad, here's what's most likely to happen. And depending upon our risk profile, we'll make the decisions we choose. And you can see some more uh, flow charts that applies that in a production model. You can read it faster than I can tell you, but this is some of the most important stuff 
you're ever going to see. Ultimately, you're going to be paid to be a decision maker. You're going to be paid to be able to think your way through problems. And these are the best processes we know for doing that. Now, as I said before, there's some people out there that just do this intuitively. Then there's the rest of, you, of uh, people on planet Earth who don't. And you can see this flow chart for the production model. And we have what we call deterministic models versus a stochastic or a probabil probabilistic model. And that is if any of the, the uncontrollable uh, inputs are uncertain. Okay, this happens a lot in sports. How will LeBron play tonight? Will he have a great game? Uh, will the, uh, yeah, how, will, will, will OU be able to have a good season now that Baker Mayfield's departed? Uh, the, the young the young men who are competing for the job of, of quarterback will they fit in that system? Uh, how will it play out? How will OU's defense hold up this year? Um, so we have the anytime we are we have uncontrollable inputs and we have uncertainty, then we have that stochastic or probabilistic model. Well, the text walks us through the process of data preparation, and then we develop the model. Now, let me say this. As we work through these cases, understand that the data that we have as we plug in are typically going to be data that are historical in nature, or they're going to be data that that we're, we're taking an educated guess. When we looked at known plastics, for example, and we, and, and we looked at fixed costs, <clears throat> and then we looked at, at variable costs per unit, the variable cost per unit is the one that's likely the most likely to be uncontrollable. And, and, and that's the one that, that, that's one of those that we may be, have historical data, but we have to make sure that we understand the historical data tell us about the past. One of the reasons we use management science and one of the reasons we use simulations is to say, well, what will things look like if X, Y, and Z happen? Because if we continue to make, if we make decisions just based upon the past, we're essentially, uh, it's like somebody trying to drive looking in their rearview mirror. <laughs> You're going to have an accident. So we try to do projections, and, and, and we'll talk about that a lot in the course. All right. Now, again, I want to go back over here in, into, the, into, the, into the modules. All right. And again, on the 31st, we'll have Nolan Plastics, that'll be due. And I've got the Nolan Plastics key. I've got it open here for you. And we've talked about that. So all you have to do is, is upload it. And then you have your, your, exam, your quiz exams on Anderson chapter one and two. Those are due by 5 p.m. on the 31st. Okay. And this, this screencast is for Monday, the 27th of August. And then on Wednesday, okay, I'll do a screencast and we'll, we, we won't talk too much about Nolan, we've already done that, but we'll preview PAR uh, Incorporated, MD, M D Chemicals, okay? And, uh, and then we, you'll see we've got some things we're gonna do with the variables there for those cases, okay? Uh, and uh, then you see the places for the PAR Inc and upload those and then um, we'll have another disruption which is the September the 6th which is going to be Labor Day when we won't meet so I'll have to do another screencast that will take the place because we won't meet on on uh, on this on this on the 6th which is Labor Day okay everybody well I think we've got us started and, and rolling along 
And again, don't, don't forget that next week, Monday, uh, you'll, you'll want to view the screencast, all right? And you'll want to upload the, the Nolan Plastics. Now, let me stop for a moment and say, as you look at the screencasts, you can always go, if you attend a live session, then you can all, once I've posted the, the, the uh, video at YouTube, I'll put a link over here in the announcements area and you can go look at it. Take chunks of it. And don't forget that these, these, uh, tra these the, the video that I post on YouTube also will come with a transcript. And so you can see the transcript. And if you have a question about something I did, write, stop, pause the video, write down the, the you know, that one hour and 12 seconds, whatever, and say, I have a question about this. Then I can try to answer your question. And often I will do that by just simply doing a short little screencast and say, here's what you're looking at, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So we won't have class on Monday. I'm at the doctor's, I have a doctor's appointment. And while, but you do have class because I have this screencast, it'll be recorded. You need, you're responsible to sit and see the material in it. Um, and then we'll get, and once we get past Labor Day, we'll get into that comfort, comfort zone where we're not having all these disruptions. Okay. Well, everybody, I'm going to stop uh, the sharing and then I'm going to stop the recording and save this and post it over at YouTube. And uh, have a good one. And again, if you have any questions, please make sure to contact me and, uh, and email usually is the quickest way. I do have my schedule uh, posted over and in my door as well as in here. And uh, you'll know what's going on. That's my schedule for week zero and week word. Uh, pardon me, Z, work week zero, which is this week, and then week one, which is next week. All right, I'm going to stop the sharing, and I'm going to stop the recording, then I'll end the meeting. Have a good one, everybody.